Welcome to Altium Designer 17 Advanced PCB Course. This module will cover multi-channel design, starting with the schematics and then moving on to the PCB. The multi-channel example we will use for the module consists of a four-channel microphone preamp and mixer. Here we have a block diagram of the four-channel preamplifier. There are four input channels, an auxiliary channel, all of these feeding the headphone mixer block. Instead of creating four copies of the same preamp circuit, we capture a single channel and then in Altium replicate the circuit using schematic compiler directives. Let's look at the single channel circuit shown here in the schematic. Starting at the top level schematic for the project, we have the schematic sheet symbol for one input channel. Diving into it, we see the actual circuit that we have already looked at. We could, in fact, place four copies of this schematic sheet symbol. With the four copies, we would have to do the layout and routing for each of the channels manually. Instead, by using compiler directives, we can leverage the layout of one channel, then use its layout for all of the other channels. This allows the PCB designer to spend more time focusing on creating a compact and clean layout for a single channel, yielding a higher quality layout with less overall effort. To create a multi-channel, we will add the compiler directive repeat. First add this directive to the input channel's sheet symbols designator. Double-clicking on the sheet symbol, we add the repeat directive followed by an open parenthesis. Now within the parentheses, we would put the desired base reference designator, in this example, INP, then we have a comma, and then the starting reference designator of one with another comma, and then the ending reference designator of four. This would generate four copies of this initial design. And then we would, of course, close parentheses. This will instruct the compiler to create four copies of the reference schematics with the reference designator index starting from one and going to four. Notice the stack box appearance indicating that this is a multi-channel instance. Now that we have four copies of the input channel, we need to provide the compiler with the needed directives for proper connections to the individual copies. By using the repeat directive on the headphone sheet connection, that particular I.O. will be broken out for each copy of the circuit to generate a bus, allowing unique top-level connections. Note the wire net label is just headphone, but it connects to a bus labeled headphone 1 through 4. If an input or output sheet entry label does not have the repeat directive, then all the copies of the multi-channel block would be tied together for this particular I.O. at the top level. Here's a diagram showing the differences between having the repeat and not having the repeat on the sheet entry. The circuit on the right illustrates the equivalent connections that would be generated by the left circuit with the repeat directive on the headphones sheet entry. Note also that MB1 and 2 are connected in parallel. Just to reiterate, use the repeat directive to enable each of the repeated blocks ports to break out to the connection on a bus. Without the repeat, all of those are connected together. Compiling the design updates the unified data model in the memory and creates four tabs on the input channel schematic, as you can see here. Now we can transfer the design to the PCB using Design Update PCB. And in the process, the four copies of the input channel will be generated, each within their own room. Looking at the PCB, we see all the rooms that were generated by the design placed next to the bare PC board. Note the component designators that were generated during the compile. Altium allows for some naming options for those auto-generated designators. To view or change the compiler option for the naming conventions, click on the project file. Right-clicking and select Project Options, and then navigate to the Multi-Channel tab. Here we see the current settings for both room naming style and component naming. We can change these to modify how the compiler creates the room and component designators. Trying a few options, we can see what the resulting naming would be in the graphic. Next, modifying the component names, we can see the effect. So recompiling will set the designators now based on our new settings, as you can see. Updating the PCB with the new room and component names, we see the changes there as well. One feature in Altium is the designator view setting. Right-click within the PCB view and select Options, Board Options. In this pop-up window, there is a section labeled Designator Display with a pull-down menu. 
Clicking on that menu shows us the two options for the display designators, display physical and logical designators. Toggling this will show us the difference. Logical reflects the single schematics designators across all copies in the PCB, while the physical shows the actual compiled unique designators that we saw originally in the tabbed sections in the schematics. Now with the design transferred to the PCB, we would use the normal process for placement of rooms with one notable exception, the four multi-channel rooms. I would start by laying out one of the input channel rooms, paying close attention to a clean, tight layout with an eye towards aligning four copies to facilitate the overall PCB signal flow. Here is one example of a single channel layout. With the layout of one channel done, we can now demonstrate the power of multi-channel design with leveraging the layout across all of the channel rooms. First, you would want to arrange the remaining rooms for the channels so that when they take on the general form of the mess rooms layout, they will play nicely with each other. Now we are ready to use the copy room format feature of Altium Designer. Start by selecting the design pull down menu, click on rooms, and then copy room formats. This changes the mouse pointer to crosshairs. We would first select the connected up master room so that we could copy that particular layout to the other input channel rooms. This opens up a pop-up window with a number of options. Clicking on the apply to specified channel box allows for all of the input channel rooms to be updated with the first or master room layout. We will update them one at a time just for illustrating the process. Now as you can see, all the rooms have been updated with a layout and placement from the first selected master room. At this point, we would select the rooms and place them with an eye towards the interconnections between them, as well as the interconnections to the other parts of the PC board design. One thing to consider when creating the first rooms layout is how those room interconnections will interact with each other, especially with the other multi-channel rooms. Selecting a common, non-repeated signal, we've selected the MB1 net, which is common to all of them. So as you can see, the highlighted elements in the layout, now we can connect up the MB1 nets across all four rooms with a common track on the bottom layer. At this point, you could finalize the rest of the placement and layout as needed, having leveraged the routing of one channel onto the three others. This completes the instruction on creating multi-channel designs. We showed the setup for multi-channel using schematic compiler directives, the multi-channel naming options in the project settings, transferred the design to the PCB, copied one room layout to the other rooms, and at this point could finish the rest of the layout. Please do both the multi-channel exercise 1, multi-channel design, and exercise 2, multi-channel working with rooms.